Okay, here is my Dyson DC44 vacuum cleaner. And in this video, I want to talk about and show you how to clear a blockage. So I've had this for six months now, and over those uh, months, we've used this extensively almost every other day. And uh, we've, between us, managed to pick up perhaps larger items than the, the unit's designed for. And once or twice, we've now had a, a blockage, both in the head here, both on the entrance into the dust compartment, and once we had a, uh, a bit of a snarl up with some sticky tape in the actual tube pipe itself. So I just want to talk through those things as well as show you how to clear a blockage in the head, which is exactly what I've got at the moment. So what I want to actually show you also first though, it's going to be a little bit noisy, is I'm going to connect this up to the unit and let you hear a particular noise that you might hear because it's a, a sound that you only get when there's a blockage and uh, it's also a sound that you might find is a prelude to your main unit stalling and when I mean by stalling I mean the actual motor cuts out so it's a very clever little safety feature that Dyson's got so what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to just use the unit without anything on the end so you can just hear that it's working fine and this is the normal clear sound just so you can hear what it sounds like through my camera and the microphone I've got here So absolutely, as you hear, a nice con constant sound. That wasn't with the max button on. We almost never use the max button. We don't find we need it. And um, we certainly get a much better battery life uh, duration in use without, being, without it being used. So I'm now going to just connect the head onto the unit. And uh, obviously without the pole, just so you can see everything in shot. And you'll be able to see the, uh, the brush bar rotating, etc. So you'll know there's, there's power, etc. But if you listen to the motor this time... So what you can hear is a, da -da 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 -da, a kind of sputtering sound. And if I were to leave that running for about 45 seconds with any kind of resistance at all, the actual motor would stop and cut out and it would go completely silent. So that's the kind of sound that I wanted to share with you to give you a, another audible clue that you've actually got a blockage and you need to check things out. So what I'm going to just do now is to talk through the three main areas that we've encountered blockages and uh, my way of detecting them and uh, my various tips as well as show you a real one. So to start with, now I've got a quite a bright light behind the camera. We're going to look down the, uh, the, the actual area here, the going into the canister, where you've got the entrance pipe and it goes into the canister and behind this silver grey plastic you've actually got a slight angled flap. So it angles, we're looking from the top now, at the bottom it angles to the right so that the dust and grit and hair goes in and goes in in a direction that the, the unit wants to spin in its cyclonic way uh, to get the maximum capacity in the canister. Now this you can just use your finger, it's not too deep, it's not too, not, not too anything. And you'll feel that um, the, the flap that I was talking about is slightly movable, it does actually have a hinge point but it doesn't really close, it doesn't go that way, it only flips a little bit between just to the right of centre and the very edge. And you want to make sure that's clear. So I can, with my fingers, poke my fingers right in the end here. You don't need anything special. And I can tell that's obstruction free. You can also, looking in the bottom of the unit, of course, I've already emptied this. You can also visually inspect at the very bottom here that the airway is, is clear. And with all inspections like this, I really recommend that first of all you get yourself a, a nice small torch that you can just uh, turn on and shine into the area uh, that you're inspecting, uh, particularly before you put your finger in, just in case what you've actually got stuck in your vacuum cleaner is actually sharp or dangerous in any way. So that, to me, I know that's clear. I also know, and I showed you before, I actually pop the, the head on, I know that this is running fine. I could pop a different unit on the end, I could put a pipe or the alternative head, and I know it'll sound good, uh, and this is this is fine. So I can now pop that aside and put the focus onto the other two main parts. The main tube is the easiest, the next one to do. So what we'll do is we'll just, again, I'll angle this so you can see right down. I've got quite a bright light here, so there you go. Now I can see that all the way through, nice clean uh, image. Again, you'd be using a torch. If you haven't got a very light, light bright light again, and the, the problem that sometimes you encounter with this is it's a little bit deceptive. So the, the tube itself feels quite uh, quite a large circumference and the inside is actually smaller, of course, because running down the uh, side of the internal pipe are the power rails that power the, uh, the motors in the heads. So people sometimes are a little bit uh, uh, caught out by this where they don't realize the actual size of the, uh, the type of items that can go down that pipe successfully. 
Now the only blockage I've had in this is actually where somebody sucked up some tape. It got halfway down and uh, sort of stick. So it's literally because it was sticky that it got stuck. And imagine yourself with a great big pipe cleaner. I literally, in this case, I rolled up some newspaper and I was prodding it down, prodding it down, and I managed to push it out the end and then eventually cleared all the tape and then managed to pull the paper back again. So not so nice and smooth. That has got enough oomph to push out any blockages and um, I found uh, rolled up newspaper absolutely adequate. So that's happened once and that's because of sticky tape. Okay, so we're going to turn our attention now to the head. I've already checked that the brush bar is nice and clear and uh, I now can spin this quite freely both ways. So without much resistance, putting my fingers on the red bristles because the black ones are just too delicate to uh, to move anything, I can spin reasonably freely the um, the roller both directions. So I've got nothing snarling here, but for this purpose, I'm actually going to remove it. I've got a new favorite coin. I use the 10p piece um, quite a lot, but I've now got a favorite coin, 50 euro cent is even better. So I'm gonna unlock this, slide this out nice and quick. Just pulling it out there again, so it's out of the way. So again, what I'm able to now do is I can see this slot at the back here, which is where all the grit, dust and hairs go up. There it is in the light. And I can again, with my finger, just check. After having had a good visual inspection, I can see there's no blockages and feel there's no blockages in that part there, which is absolutely fantastic because the further down this end here, the harder it is to clear. So I'm now gonna look at the uh, the, the join where the wheel is. Now, as you can see, you can pretty much straighten it flat. As you know, it goes under furniture really well. So I'm gonna have a good look in this pipe and I can already see in there some obstruction. Don't know why it's not clearing. Now, my fingers, although I can push, you get no advantage pushing. So there's no point prodding your fingers down there because all you're gonna do is push it through, as you can see, a far narrower slat. And it's quite difficult to force things through this way and then try to pull them out. But it's also equally difficult to push things that way to get that this way. So this conundrum I solve with scissors. So the longer the blades, the better. But what I do is I very delicately put them in so they're open very slightly. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip. I'm gonna keep turning, I'm gonna snip inside whatever in I've got inside here. I know it's not gonna be anything more than hair, grit, dust and card. And these snipping motions will help reduce the size. So a mixture of uh, this is now gonna help just to clear the unit, as well as you might be able to grab something. So you might actually feel that you can, there we go. You, I could feel it when I was cutting it, I grabbed something. Now that literally might have been it. That, a bit of paper, a bit of sellotape, in fact, sellotape folded over. That could have been, or that was blocking it. That could have been enough to uh, to snarled, snarled, sorry. The dust and the, uh, the grit, a bit of shaking. Now I'm already getting things falling out just by, by weight alone. So I'm now gonna pop that in the Hoover, the vacuum cleaner itself, the main motor end. And I know I've got the brush off. This is all about getting uh, getting this gunk out of here. I'm gonna quickly turn it on and let's see what happens. Now, sound-wise alone, even though not a great deal has come through the bin, that sounds a lot better. It isn't now stalling, and I'm not getting that kind of coughing sound that the motor was doing. Now I'm gonna look down here again, right down the very end. It's quite difficult to see. You can just about see the grayness of the, uh, the dust at the corner there and uh, I'm now out of reach for my scissors and I haven't got anything longer. So what I do next, and I'll have to do another one here because I threw the last one away, is I'm gonna use an old metal hanger. All I do is I pull it straight because ultimately I want to get this here. So it's uh, thin enough to go through here and I've got to refashion the, uh, the hook, but I'm just doing this with my hands. You might want to use a pair of pliers, etc. But all I need to do is to make this hook here on the end much smaller. Now it's going to be a mixture of pushing, hooking and pulling, but I'm going to now just pop this in here, I'm making sure by the way that the hook is bent back on itself because what you don't want is this metal thing to catch. So you want the widest part to be smooth both ways so it can go in and out. So that might not be small enough, no it's not, let me just crush that down a little bit more. I've got myself a nice prodding hook with which I can hopefully now clear this obstruction with a mixture of pushing and pulling. So as I said, it's a, it is difficult to try and push it all at the end because the slot at the other end is quite narrow as well. And although you may not get anything out yourself by hooking, what you are gonna do is you're gonna loosen things and loosening things, you'll be surprised at what you can then clear using the actual suction of the unit itself. And it can often clear things, but I'm pretty curious now as to see what I've got in here that's actually been drawn inside. So I've actually done quite a bit of pushing here as well. So although this is quite difficult, I'm gonna flick out the front here. Okay, that's quite a good wedge. There's no actual real substance to that, so I'm still a little bit uh, still looking for what the cause was, and possibly it was just this bit of tape. 
and then a, a real rockage built up behind because it just wasn't noticed. So let's have another look right down here. Let's put the light on there again. I can still see blockage, so that certainly isn't all of it. So it's amazing how much is that actually crammed and packed in here. Because until you notice, and uh, in this case it was because the motor's coming out, you're not always aware. There we go, got it. So I actually hooked that this way. So it's going to be quite gross. It's a lot of hair and a lot of matter, but I can feel that feel felt very clear. Again, let's just prove this to myself. Absolutely, I can now see all the way down, and all I'm seeing is now the insides of the uh, the grey tube. I'm going to quickly pop it on. Let's hear the noise I'm after without the uh, stuttering and. Perfect, that's exactly the sound you should hear. So I'm going to reassemble it, put the brush bar in, one last little whiz, and I'm done. Okay, so I popped the uh, brush bar all back inside, one last firing. As you can see, all spinning nicely, all sounds perfect, and apart from the few blockages, uh, absolutely love it and uh, wouldn't look back. It's it's minor inconvenience to do this kind of thing uh, every few uh, months. Uh, and the kind of uh, the, the level of cleanliness that our carpets get, these, these carbon fiber filaments make all the difference. This just picks up so much more uh, dust. So we absolutely love this head and I'd certainly never buy a vacuum cleaner without this combination of stiff bristles and fiber filaments again. Okay, so uh, sorry that took so long, and uh, hopefully that's talked through all the various kind of blockages you can get, and I think you've just seen one of the toughest ones going. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. Okay, here is my Dyson DC44 vacuum cleaner, and in this video I want to talk about and show you how to clear a blockage. So I've had this for six months now, and over those uh, months we've used this extensively almost every other day, and uh, we've, between us, managed to pick up perhaps larger items than the, the unit's designed for, and once or twice we've now had a, a blockage both in the head here, both on the entrance into the dust compartment, and once we had a, uh, a bit of a snarl up with some sticky tape in the actual tube pipe itself. So I just want to talk through those things as well as show you how to clear a blockage in the head, which is exactly what I've got at the moment. So what I want to actually show you also first though, it's going to be a little bit noisy, is I'm going to connect this up to the unit and let you hear a particular noise that you might hear because it's a, a sound that you only get when there's a blockage and uh, it's also a sound that you might find is a prelude to your main unit stalling and when I mean by stalling I mean the actual motor cuts out so it's a very clever little safety feature that Dyson's got so what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to just use the unit without anything on the end so you can just hear that it's working fine and this is the normal clear sound just so you can hear what it sounds like